Uh, I believe a, a portion of it will be private, Mayor, um, as it relates to pending litigation. Okay, but there's other parts of it. Right? Part of it's not pending. The majority of it's not. Uh, Pardon me? Not, the majority of it's prior to the public. Yeah. So we'll keep this in the public, then, okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Council members, uh, I'd like to announce that we recently had a very big victory in the tax court with the settling of the Forest Hill Country Club. That, that property tax appeal has been in place since the year 2008. They filed directly after the rebound, and as you can see from the exposure analysis, what they were looking to win as a refund was almost $800,000. As a result of our victory in tax court recently, the judge deferred all the years. So basically there is zero refunding on that. That was a joint effort. The majority, the majority of that case was driven by the double side. Chris Draco, our attorney from the Big Pitney, did a great job. Ultimately, uh, Bloomfield also had their own counsel. We shared experts to, uh, on the uh, appraisal side. So that was a big win for us. Also, as you can see in the next page of my report, I gave you a detailed list of all tax appeals in town, the filings. Last year, we had the lowest number of appeals filed since our rebound in 2007. Prior to the rebound, appeals were below 200 annually. Last year, we totaled at 262, but as you can see, in 2009, we were at 458. So when it comes to tax appeals, that was on good, solid ground. Yeah, just a quick question. Yes. Now, with, with that reval that they ordered, will this help us with the appeal for that? For the country club? No, no, on the, on the overall town. That the, that the county the county wants us to reval the entire town, right? Well, we have that reval order pending, yes. Right, so, I mean, you can appeal that order, can you not? Or no? The county of Essex prefers <laughs> to have all of their revaluations done within a 10-year basis, okay? okay? The city of New York was revalued in the 50s. And then they dragged their heels when they got reval orders on numerous occasions. They finally conducted the reval in 2003. Well, they did their second reval in 2013, 10-year anniversary. Right. Okay. Fortunately for Belleville, our ratio is still very good. Our ratio is 98%. Okay. Which means that at the end of the day, the majority of our properties are kind of worth what they're assessed at. What they they're assessed at. We, we could certainly explore the possibilities of defying that rebound order, but I don't think it would be a popular reaction from the county tax administrator. Okay. So I personally, as much as I don't want to see the district have to spend the money on the revaluation, we'll wind up with much better records going forward, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to contain the volume of appeals. Uh, the third page of my report is a list of properties that I filed overrides on to further prevent refunding for this year. As you can see at the bottom, as a result of the, the uh, 20 plus overrides that I filed, to save 264,000 in refunding in the 2016 budget. So that's a uh, that's a wonderful feature, uh, wonderful, wonderful function that I can do. The last page of my report, we have had a dramatic increase in the volume of deeds recorded. Last year was a record year for Belleville. We had 561 recorded deeds in the municipality. As you can see, that volume has tremendously increased. So if there's been any increases, it's not necessarily doing with the appeals. We had a decrease there. We had a volume of deeds. A lot of that's with the result of the current market activity heating up in town. We've got more properties transacting, uh, prices going for well above assessed value in some cases, uh, due to renovations that have been made to a lot of the existing housing supply in town. That seems to be cyclical, too, from what I can, you know, what I'm looking at here, it's gone up as high as, it's like, 482. Yeah. And then it came down a little bit and then it goes back up. So well, that's kind of how it runs. It's kind it of follows the real estate market. The market, the market was between that's 4, 5, and 6. It's so it's, it's going to follow the real estate market. It's the market. Okay. Got the it. other the other, the other, other thing that you see is a lot of dollar D transfers as a result of refinances. Uh -huh. So, and unfortunately, every now and then we also see a foreclosure deed in there. Um, 
the foreclosures take a lot longer to take place, so they don't always happen in, uh, as rapidly as they, as they once did. Uh, there was a more torn on foreclosures for a period of time. But uh, on a tax court level, we can discuss uh, pending litigation in private session. Want to make a motion? motion. You want a private? Second. Yes. Kennedy? Yes. 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 Um, today we started the work on the 15-inch uh, diameter sanitary saw on Rollman Street. Uh, tomorrow we'll be installing the insertion valve on the water line, so we can actually shut it down. All right, and then they can be, begin to repair on the sanitary sewer. Sewer. Uh, we also started installing. 500 feet of 8 inch sanitary sewer at the new senior housing, uh, and we expect to finish that by next week. Uh, the cornice work at Town Hall is almost complete, with the exception of the corner on the Bellevue Avenue side, uh, and we need to have Mr. Harris inspect that before we sign off on that and actually pay. Uh, we also had a meeting. Uh, with Mr. I'm sorry? I just have a question. Oh, sure. Steve, there was an emergency. There was an emergency. Yes, they were actually, I'm sorry, Council. No, I'm just curious. What the, what the, the same, same thing every meeting. You got microphones up there, haven't you? You're not going to use them, take them down, please. Well, it's, we, we, we're using a microphone, I believe. We're putting up a noise I'm, from these I'm, things I'm up I'm here. I know, like, There's nothing more I can do except. Open your mouth, that's what you do. No, if you just stop talking into the audience and have little meetings, maybe you'll hear us. I'm sorry. I'm not talking. There was other people talking. Go ahead. No, it's still not talking. Yeah, I saw them working, and I was just curious because, you know, usually that says to me that maybe stuff is falling off. Or there, there was, in fact, um, material falling off. Um, what it is, it's the same material, it's like terracotta that they use up on, on the top of the building. And what happened, because of water and just age, it was beginning to peel and there were some barricades that you saw out there. So what happened was uh, the previous manager, Mr. Esposito, authorized a repair of a portion of it. All right. What we did was we authorized the additional repair because there were other sections of the building where it was falling. And we, quite frankly, didn't have enough time to put it back out to bid. It would have cost us more money for them to stop working on the one section and remobilize it. The sanitary sewer on Geralman Street was also an emergency. That's why it's, it's under new business as an emergency, uh, which we expect to cost around $60,000 uh, plus or minus uh, because we didn't, again, we didn't have time to draw specs. That road was closed and we want to get it open and get that sewer sort of repaired. Uh, okay, we also met with the uh, lawyers for the, uh, the Finkelsteins to discuss, discuss the redevelopment. Uh, of that property. It was a very congenial meeting and I believe it will bear some fruit in the near future. Uh, we have also have, we're in the process of developing some uh, bond ordinances for some grants that we have and some additional work. One is for, for generators at several of our facilities, Town Hall, DPW, the garage and the like, uh, the Friendly House, uh, and also we have some street work that we want to do that we need to front the money on. It's DOT work and CBBG work in addition to some local roads that we're doing uh, in the amount of like $2.6 million, which is right around the amount that we normally bond. The generators will probably cost us around $700,000. Uh, we had a closing date of last Friday, March 4th, uh, for, uh, to accept resumes for a part-time judge. Uh, we received five resumes, the committee will, will set a date, I'll do that through the clerk's office, uh, and we will select the judge. Uh, we're also in discussion with civil service about the appointment of the court administrator and the deputy administrator. There's a conflict between the law and a direction from civil service, so we're, we're trying to clear that up. Um, I spoke with uh, Kathy Elliott Shaw from the Green Acres program down in Trenton uh, about a track around uh, in, at the municipal stadium 
Uh, she's researching it. She sent me some pictures today uh, that did not have a track, but just had the McAdam walking area. So we're going to continue those discussions. And Tom Harris is also following up, so hopefully we can get a track back. Uh, I met with Mr. Egan, uh, the state monitor over at the Board of Ed, to talk about uh, shared services. And uh, what we decided was we will put a committee together of the governing body, and they will put a committee together to discuss a wide range of shared services. Uh, I know we spoke a while ago. I wanted to raise it again this evening. Uh, I recommend that we put out an RFQ for grant writing services. And there are some grants that are just box top grants. You fill out the application, you send them in, you get the money. But there are some more detailed grants for much larger amounts all right, that we may be missing the boat on. So with your approval, I'll move ahead to do that. Uh, I also was in discussion with uh, Rich Cavanaugh and Phil Salmon uh, of the fire department to speak about minimum staffing levels and how we can achieve that. And they're going to get back to me on how we can realize some savings and some changes about the way we do business so that we can assure the utmost safety not only for our firemen but also for our residents. Uh, last but not least, we had a request uh, from an adjacent property owner on Smith and Union Smith Street and Union Terrace who was interesting, interested in purchasing a small strip of land. It's four feet by nine and a half feet at the other end for 104 feet in length. Um, we're, uh, I'll be dealing with that through the town attorney's office because the value of the land is less than what an appraisal would cost, so we believe we are well within our rights of offering it to adjacent property owners. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, did we come up with a date yet for the alternate side of the street parking? I have dozens of residents that want to know. Can we send it? No, yeah, to, to get back into I spoke with Deputy Chase Minichini today. I believe the date is going to be um, March 24th. And what we're going to do before we do that, we're going to have our second chance folks that, that volunteer uh, for us go down Greylock Park. I was driving around today, and just as a result of the winter, there was gravel on that median there. So we're going to have them sweep all that. We're going to start putting the sweepers out, all right, to do main thoroughbreds like that to clean up the middle of the street. Then we're going to go back to alternate side of the street parking so we can clean the balance. Yeah, because all the, the residents don't want to get tickets. Yeah, well, I don't blame <laughs> you. You know, maybe we could send that every first time we one out. Yeah, that would we, be we are. People plan on doing that. Yes. yes. Also, the uh, benches for the, uh, the city park. The benches, I, I, I meant to uh, tell Sue Whalen today to get in touch with the Gipalo people so they can do that. The weather is absolutely cooperating so we can get that done in short. You're not going to tell her today she's in England. No, I don't know where she is. Uh, England. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, you and I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, several people have approached me, but I want to know how the council feels about this too. Several people have approached me that like garage sales. They would like a town-wide garage sale. I know nothing does this. Um, one woman who approached me and then she pulled me back, she said maybe instead of a town-wide, we could do it by wards, and this way people can go to each other's. So again, I'm, I'm just bringing it to the council. I, I did a lot of requests on this. I mean, I don't go to garage sales, but a lot of people like them. And I think he told me they're a big success in Nutley. They're a huge success. They're very popular. Whether you do a town-wide garage sale or you do it by wards, people are very receptive. I don't know how to question. Feel about that? I think that's a great idea. How does it work? Do they do they end up having the permits, even though it's a town wide thing? There, there is a permitting it? process, yes, because we need to keep track of this. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the time is. If June is a good time, October. I mean, you, you have more experience with that. Than you do. Um, I don't do that directly, but I'll be happy to investigate that and get back to you as to what the best time to move on that. Thanks. Okay. Also, um, I'm glad to see that we now have online. online Pay your property taxes, your water bills. Uh, you have that option, and maybe during the public session, uh, Mr. Shelley, you just briefly um, talk about that. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, um, I got a couple of letters. Okay. Okay. Right, <laughs> so I, I got a couple of letters. Recently, from people that are upset about the condition of Washington area. Um, signage on uh, storefronts, signage in windows, flags, banners. Um, in particular, there's also some complaints about 
there's a, a new furniture store next to Abbott's Drug Store, and they seem to think that the sidewalk is their show. Like, even on the way here tonight, I mean, half the block is covered in mattresses and all that kind of stuff, and I believe that's not allowed. Uh, there's also that restaurant supply store by the firehouse on Washington Ave, and then that auto supply store that used to be Boston store. Uh, they constantly have cars up on the sidewalk, store stuff over there. You know, it just started to look really, really, really sharp. We put the new lights up, and uh, they look nice, but now we have you know, signs that are there forever. There's, uh, they have all kinds of uh, details about what the signed ordinances are, covering windows and all that stuff. So that's something we can look into. And sure, I'll be happy to give that to code enforcement. Yeah, it'll be a little more uh, proactive with that. Yeah, we already had a discussion, uh, DPW and myself, about posting Washington Avenue and giving it a good cleaning. I mean, now we're, we're noticing all the debris and all the dirt and, and what have you from the winter. So we're going to make a concerted effort to clean that up. But I'll also uh, inform us that the Randall's office to get on this. What about the uh, rest of Greylock Parkway immediately? Is that going to be done soon or at all? The rest of the median? Well, you know, they did the, the below Union Ave part. Right? Mm -hmm. They got rid of all those blocks and they put the concrete. Now the other half, going up towards Chestnut, is not done. Are they going to do I believe do the immediate too? plans all right, are to pave that. We're going to clean it first. We're going to pave it, and then Mr. Mr. Harris, I believe, will be programming that. He's in the spring. Yeah. We're going to pave the median? No, 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 pave the road, because the median was done, but the road, it was patched in by the median. They only did the bottom, below Union Ave. They did, well, I'm not talking about the I'm talking about the median. No, I know what you're talking about. So they didn't do above Union Ave. Right. Are they going to do it to match? I, I guess we'll have to look at that. I believe that they are on the check of the Are they going to do both sides? Because now they tore it up to do the, the medium on the uh, lower side. Usually when Mr. Harrods uh, programs an improvement, all right, which I was pleasantly pleased about, he does milling, he does paving, he does curbs, he does sidewalks and aprons. So he does a complete job. So without speaking to him, I would think that he would because he's just that kind of guy. Um, what's uh, what's going to You mentioned the friendly house. It sounded like you lumped that in with the generator, not with outfitting it for recreation. Are we? Have there been any meetings of the committee or anything like that? To the committee. Or? The committee needs to meet. Uh, I know Councilwoman Burke had some discussions with some county personnel that she may want to share with you. Uh, yes, um, I was told that we're going to get uh, 100 chairs and 10 tables to start off for nothing. So that's the start. At least we'll have some place to sit. <laughs> because I knew we're going forever with this. Well, you said there's some bond, bond money for the front of the house, didn't you? There may be some. I need to check into that. The bond money that I was speaking about this evening was for a generator, which was a separate grant aside from the other buildings that we were awarded. It a lot of power. I did, I did run into uh, Charlie Hood this weekend, and he said it was a great thing to be able to use that front of the house for soccer. So I think it would be great if we could use it for the rest of its intended purpose, which we start. Uh, yeah. there, there are many uses for that. Yeah. I visited that. But it's just council dragging and dragging yeah. and dragging. We keep so, talking about committees, but it's at least a year since the committee was formed and no meetings, right? Well, there was meetings that come up. As a matter of fact, before Mr. Moore was here, we met at the friendly house with the recreation director. Yes. And uh, you were there. Yes. We were supposed to get the uh, temporary baskets of get in there. For the kids. A volleyball net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, volleyballs so they could play and uh, stuff like that. Right. right. Match for tumbling. Yeah, match for tumbling and wrestling. Right. So, awesome. so, so I mean, it's in, it's in the process. I don't know if you want to that we can get a bond or something to get this well, started. I'm, I brought the bonds that we're moving on right now to you this evening because okay. of timing. We need to get that done, especially right. especially the CDBG money. But there together. will be other bonds that I'll be coming back to you right. requesting your approval on, and that's absolutely one of them. Okay, very good. So we still don't know exactly what we're doing, but we're going to have more meetings. Well, I'm going to go back and, and get the results of what the committee decided, and then we're going to follow through all the recommendations of the committee. Um, the uh, the firehouse. I, I mentioned that 
you know, I, I see that we're going out for uh, for bids on the roof. Mm -hmm. And I'm no contractor, but... The roof and the masonry on the outside, yes. I still don't understand why we wouldn't... We know we have a certain amount of money to go towards that building. Why wouldn't we get prices to fix everything and find out and find out how much no, I don't know because it keeps making that noise. I mean you're gonna get out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even know what needs to be done there. I hear different stories, the roof, the sleeping quarters, the sleeping quarters, the roof, sad rooms and floors. Why the would kitchen. we go out the kitchen. The kitchen. The kitchen. Let him use your mic. Uh, the, mic over. the question was. Why, why, why wouldn't we, instead of just going out for getting prices on the roof, why don't we get prices on everything that needs to be done? Then we will know how much it will cost. We'll know if we have enough money. And if we don't, then we can make the appropriate decisions on what we're going to do. In order, to, Because I keep hearing that, well, it's not such a big deal because we're going to get a new firehouse from a developer. But who knows when that will be and where it will be and what it will be like and all that stuff. We have a building. We had money. Why don't we do that? The way it was explained to me was it's a, it's a question of sequencing. All right, if we have to seal the building, so the first, the, the first and best place to start that obviously is with the roof and the masonry. While we're in the process of doing that, we can then plan on the next phase, whether it's the flooring, the interior, or the bathroom. So it's going to be, it's going to be a sequenced improvement. All right. It still doesn't make sense to me. It's broke, I guess. The point is, why don't we find out how much it's going to cost to fix the building? It doesn't cost us anything to find out what it's going to cost to fix it. And we know we have a certain amount of money, so why don't we do that? That's what I had a resolution on tonight, uh, to just get the price. Let's find out. I mean, because we're going to get prices on a roof, then we're going to start the roof, then we're going to finish the roof, and then a year from now, we're going to get prices on the bathroom. No, 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 no that, that's not. The sequencing is, is not. It's going to occur one, one after another, all right? And sometimes when you, when you put out an entire project like that, it becomes overwhelming. There are different items that, that are missed, all right? We want to assure that it's done the right way, it's done in a fashion that we just continue with the improvement, all right? And this is, it's, I, actually, it's probably a matter of style. Mr. Harris is very comfortable with doing it this way, and I have to defer to his expertise. I'm not a professional engineer. Well, if I lived over there, I would think it's never going to get done. Just yeah, because I see the way it's been going, and uh, I mean, we've been talking about this for months, too. We still don't have a contractor for the roof yet. Uh, I'm only here a couple of months, and in a couple of months, we're moving on this. We're move, we've moved on many of the redevelopment agreements. We're moving on reconciliation as far as what our, our bills are and what we owe. We're moving on the budget. We're halfway through. So everything is coming together. I can't speak to what went on before, but I can speak to you about what we're going to do moving forward. I mean, we all did, we all did agree, and we voted, that we are going to renovate the Civil Lake Firehouse. Yeah. And yeah. that's where it is. And I, I have to say that I believe that. Unless I'm living in a dream world, I don't know. But that's what we're here for. They Everybody gave their agreement. To ask that we go out and get the plans and find out what it's going to cost. You know, I Does see, it cost I any money to... I see construction going on all the time. You know, I work by the World Trade Center. While they're still going up, they're putting sheetrock in down below. So it's not like you have to, you know, if this was your house, you wouldn't wait for the roof to be on before you fix the bathroom necessarily. Right? right, but you wouldn't fix the floor while the roof is still leaking. And you want to make bathroom improvements, I have other issues going on. This is going to get done in a timely fashion. That's the problem. We're going to go out for all these progressive bids, and all that's going to take years. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see it that way, if you like, and I don't know that it's necessarily uh, accomplished through a resolution, but I can get an overall estimate for you, if you like, from Mr. Harris. I think that's a great idea. That's all I'm saying. Get the estimate. I'll be happy to do that. Get the estimate. That's all I'm saying.
That's all I'm saying is can we can we just find out how much it's going to cost? We can get because that. Because we have that money, I don't know what to do. Maybe if we while he's doing that, uh oh now So we just know, and then we'll know if the 200 and however many thousand dollars we have will get us to a point where we sure, can absolutely. We can do that. That's all I'm asking. Uh, this thing about the minimum number of firemen, I'm concerned about that because no, it doesn't seem to be uh, a priority. You know, you hear fire trucks screaming down Grella Parkway, and you wonder if there's 12 firemen so that all three pieces of equipment can go out. Because if there's 11, they can't. And there's no way of knowing when the next big fire is going to come. So why wouldn't we make that 12-man minimum right now? And I have actually that to be a resolution that didn't make it on. We are moving towards that. And actually what I told the battalion chief in a conversation that we had, that if he believed that the safety of his men or of our residents ever comes into question, that he can absolutely go to 12. All right? So that he has carte blanche with that. All right, if he feels it's necessary in his professional opinion. All right, and again, in the short time that I'm here, I've had several discussions with our with our fire chief, all right, and with our fire representatives, and we're moving in a direction that I believe is going to accomplish that while not costing us any additional dollars. Because what it comes down to at the end of the day, all right, is a, a dollar and cents issue. All right. Now, we, we're not going to put a dollar figure on someone's safety or someone's life, but we're trying to be reasonable here in containing costs, all right, while at the same time accomplishing what we need to as far as public safety is concerned. Let me ask you this. If we only have 11 firemen, we can only send out two trucks. Correct. And the fire is so big that we need help. We have to go to the town. We always do. We always go to the town. Let me finish my question. Do we have to reimburse those other towns for their help? No, it's a mutual aid agreement. Mutual aid. Okay. And again, if, there, if there's a fire that that's large, it's still, all right, the battalion chiefs know that they can it go is as well. irresponsible not to at all times be able to send all three pieces. Of Joe, do you know how many people were assigned for a shift? 16. Yeah. That's, your, that's your number. But if there's not 12 there, all three pieces of equipment can't go out at one time. That's what the firemen 16. said when they were here. Well, I know what they said. 16. There were 70 men on, I believe there were 70 men he told us on a, in the depot. Mm -hmm. They were three ships. And it was, I'm going it comes to 17. Down, apparently right, it comes so down to an overtime issue. It comes down to an overtime issue. When it comes down to, I believe the firemen acted in good faith too with regards to vacation, sick time, and personal days. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... That's a discussion I mean, that should be had, I suppose. Right, and I think it's a manager's... Manager. That's the discussion manager. we had. That's, that's, what, he's that's what he's been doing. Right. And, and I expect a recommendation back to the governing body by the next meeting. It would have been this meeting, all right, but they didn't have time to share what they're going to present back to us with their members. But I believe by the next meeting, we will probably be back to a 12-person minimum. While at the same time, not breaking the bank. Not breaking the bank. That's wow. okay. I think it should be the 12 person minimum while we're trying to not break it. So, no. Really, so, tonight, so no. If tonight there's a huge fire, we can't send it. Part of order, Mayor. Should we be discussing this? I think it's best to go the contract. This, this is within the, man, the, the, the exclusive province of the manager uh, to establish uh, uh, the things that are under discussion here. But I, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor, I think there's, there might be a provision in the collective bargaining agreement with the uh, with the firemen relating to this this particular issue, um, which is you know it's subject to collective bargaining. But in any event, this I believe the manager is doing exactly what he 
Yeah, I don't, think we, I don't think we should be negotiating this in public. I'm not negotiating. No, I'm, no it's a contractual I'm, 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 I'm not talking about negotiations. You guys are. I'm talking about being able to have three fire trucks out at the same time. Okay. And I think what I expressed was I share your concern. I've directed the battalion chief that if he feels necessary, he can go to 12, and by the next meeting we should have a permanent resolution for this, and while, while still spending wisely. Uh, yeah, Mauro, uh, could you talk with the um, both the presidents of both senior clubs and uh, perhaps uh, go to one of each of their meetings Absolutely. and uh, speak with them. I know they have some issues with the construction going on at Franklin Manor, and I think they probably have some more issues, you know, around town. Uh, one of the presidents is here tonight. So. Again, you're everything you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> I have to turn the microphones off. I'm sorry. Don't tell me to I, sit up front. He was talking about the senior center. Barnes, I told him to meet with you so he could go over some issues that you're having with the uh, with the members of the senior yes, club. Yes, I have a lot of, lot of things I need to right. address. So perhaps he could come to the senior club and speak with everyone. Mm -hmm. Very Is that good. the Tuesday and Friday club? Tuesday yes. and Friday. Tuesday and Friday? Yes. I'll be happy to. That's it. So it's more, more along, along those same lines. I know they're having some parking issues up there, right, Barnes? Oh, please, yes. And so that, that's one of the things we need to address. Okay. And evidently, they, the construction guys dump a, a load of stuff on the bocce courts, and, and it's just it needs to be cleaned up. It's, it's radically you know, out of control. I'll speak about Visit first thing tomorrow morning and we'll see what's there and have it correct. Um, I know we're talking about Franklin Street paving, Franklin Street. Did we hear anything back from the county on that? Nothing? No. Okay. Just let me know if you can get some input from them. And also the, uh, you know, getting Walnut Street out there. Walnut well. Street is, in fact, programmed to be done Okay. this construction season. Good. Um, I know we used to have a shredding event, and somebody had asked about that for us. I don't, I don't know if we, we can still do that, but just please look into it. We can't have it now at this. That was through our, our garbage company. Through our garbage company. Speak with the president of the garbage company. Oh, yeah, it's through our garbage company. They picked up all branches and trees on uh, Clinton Street today. I think the elderly couple might have paid before, but they're picking up all the cut bushes and everything, putting them in the garbage truck. They're up the garbage. Check that. I, was, I just want to make one statement. I, you know, I believe every member of this governing body is interested in the safety of both the police and the fire department, but uh, we have to let our manager do the negotiations to keep these costs under control. So uh, I don't want nobody to give him the wrong interpretation. We are, we do want everybody to be safe, not only them, but our residents. So we will do our best Put the men on while we control the force. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Yeah. Communications. A no. communication received from St. Anthony's Church on the mission to conduct their feast to St. Anthony on Friday, June 10th through Sunday, June 12th. A procession through the streets on Sunday, June 12th, and for the Wonder Feast to be made. Make a motion. Second. Quick one more. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Longo? Yes. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Any communications received from St. Peter's Church for permission to hold a procession through the streets for the stations of the cross on Friday, March 25th? Make a motion. Second. Second. Quick one rule. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Provo? Yes. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Seeing the question received from the Belmont High School Boys Soccer Association for permission to conduct fire games on weekends and weekends for the Belmont High School Boys Soccer Association. Make a motion. Second. Quick one rule. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Our bills during the months of March, April, May, September, October, and November. Yes. And December of over this. Make a motion. Second. Yes. 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 For permission to conduct tag days on weekends during the months of April and May. Make a motion. Second. Second. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Provo? Yes. Mayor Kimball? Yes. What is this? Ordinance number one for introduction and ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-
Zone. Make a motion for its introduction. Second. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Kennedy. Yes. Logo. Yes. Notari. Yes. Rogel. Yes. Trim Lober. Yes. Mayor Kimball. Yes. Ordinance number one for public hearing and ordinance creating personnel positions and adopting classification and compensation plans. Make a motion open it for public hearing. Second. Second. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rogel? Yes. Drew Lover? Yes. Mayor Kimball? Yes. Uh, going nowhere to vote. This, this is a contractual uh, with the. Uh, the personnel that's uh, it's a two percent raise of course of the board. For who? For who? For the town hall. It's a corporate board. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I missed the public participation at the last meeting when the, the, the police or firemen had two percent raises. Uh, in the real world, where it will, nobody's getting raises. Yeah. They cut them, and I think you know my business up the street. I cut my prices 33 percent just to pay the bills. So in the real world, we're not getting it. Though. When you get two percent of a hundred, a hundred fifty thousand dollars salary, uh, it, it's a lot of money. And when we got secretaries earning eighty-three thousand dollars a year and still getting two percent, you know, I got some companies I work for with. They told my name and said, what do you think they'll make? When I go on the salary list, they were flabbergasted. One girl's the CEO of a company of 170 people, and when she saw it, she makes $75,000 a year as a CEO, and she sees secretaries making 83000 So you know, it's not just 2% raise. It's 2%. It's not $2. But in the real world, people, their jobs are being cut, their salaries are being cut, their benefits are being mm -hmm. cut. In the real world, they have to pay more towards their hospitalization if they even get it anymore. Uh, pensions are being thrown out. Companies are not giving pensions anymore. So, you know, I object this 2% raise. The taxpayers bill on my street alone, more plywood was bought to board up another house. Uh, we got foreclosures up the Gazoo in Belleville. So let's not just say, ah, it's 2% raise. It is killing us. And I like what you said earlier, Mr. Mayor. You've got to try to control costs. This is one thing. You've got to draw the line. The taxpayers of Belgium can't afford 2% or even $2 raise anymore. And we have to start really pulling the strings on public and voice. Not only in Belgium, statewide. It's getting crazy. They're fleeing New Jersey elect crazy, including 17 members of my family. Thank you, sir. And it's Jerndal Gershio, a Grove Street. The ordinance that we're talking about, is that the ordinance that's posted on the board outside? Because that's more than just a, uh, that's more than just a contractual. There's all type of titles out there. They're not under a contract. And a month ago, I mentioned during the public participation that our zoning board secretary uh, is only receiving $350 a month where the planning board secretary is receiving five hundred dollars a month. Now, years ago, both secretaries, huh? I'm trying to keep the cost. Mr. Mayor. All right. So, since you want to say that, I have to straighten it out. Years ago, both secretaries got the five hundred dollars a month, and the council arbitrarily lowered both secretaries to three fifty a month. How long has it been in effect like that? It's been a couple of years. A few years, yes. But. Unbeknownst to me, all of a sudden, the planning board secretary went back up to the 500. And the zoning board secretary never went back up to the 500, which I don't believe is fair, since we do three to five times the amount of cases of the planning board. Wait, wait, wait. We will take that into consideration, but do you have something on this? That's on this. I'm asking for an amendment to the ordinance. The council will take it into consideration. Before you vote. Anyway, you did your budget, you should have done it for $500. What? When you did your budget, you should have put in for her to get five hundred dollars. You no. did the budget. No, I didn't do no budget. What are you talking about? Well, somebody does the zoning and planning board budgets. Well, I'm not the one who reduced it to three fifty. The council did that on their own, arbitrarily. No, no. Whatever comes to the, whatever comes to the, the manager and the council, that's what we put in. That's what. Goes well, on. we always had five hundred. The council decided to lower it to three fifty. On their own, a number of years ago. A number of years ago. Okay. 
But then they put the council, the, they put the planning board secretary back up to the 500, well, you, and no, I don't believe that's fair. Well, put a recommendation into uh, the director of that. I'm asking you now to amend the ordinance. No, we're not going to amend it. I mean, I don't think we should. Why do you think you should? Because we should. That's because it has budget. to be discussed. We have to see it. We have to see if it, it, it's under the budget. To be under the budget? You're talking about a lousy $150 a month. You're not talking about thousands. Okay. Is it the minimum? No, this is, this, unless this were a typographical error, you should not. Because, in no. effect, no, I think we in advertise principle, the whole thing. In it's I think probably in principle, there's, there's agreement up there with the chairman. This is not the time to do it. It can be resolved uh, post passage tonight if this ordinance passes. But it could effect, always be amended. It could yeah, always right. be put up at a later. We yeah. could do a small one on that. And it, 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 it could also go retroactive. Okay. 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 But that's what the governing body wants. As long as you decide to do it, it could be amended. Within a reasonable time, I have no problem. It could be a sort of next meeting. Okay. Thank you. I'm in agreement with Jerry. We have far more cases than the planning board or any of the other boards. They're more complicated, much more paperwork, and it's much more work for the secretary. And I think she should okay. at least be on parity with the planning board. Okay. Phil Spring Tantone, Mount Prospect Avenue. I think that in good faith they should not get a two percent raise. Social Security got no raise. We're not getting any raises out there for anything. <coughs> And they're getting 2%. It's a lot of money on the salaries that they're making. So maybe you ought to table it and talk to the people that are Thank you, in charge. Thank you. For example, I, uh, the first part of the uh, statement says an ordinance creating personnel positions. What personnel positions have been created? Was it created? No. Make a motion, close the public hearing. Oh. Good evening. Mary Higgins from 48 Brighton Avenue. Could you speak up? Could you speak up now? I will speak up. <laughs> comment on a letter printed in the February 25th, 2016. Close the public second. Move for final adoption. Second. Quick Council member Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Um, I just want to say that I'm voting no because it is there are positions that are getting more than two percent, and I object. My objection has been noted already, so I vote no to this ordinance. Notori? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Jim Lover? Yes. Mayor Kilmer? Yes. yes. Make a motion to open public participation. Second. Second. Quick Council member Cosmo? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notori? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Jim yes. Lover? Yes. yes. Mayor Kilmer? Yes. Now you could speak. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, oh no. Uh, no. No, that's all right. No, that behind. It's okay. Go ahead. I'll let her speak. I'll see that couple from 2447. Uh, I want to thank you very much, Ms. Burke, for the support she gave me with my mom. She got an ambulance. No, so she came to my street, and she's working out. And I want to thank you, all of it, to reconsider this matter, because, you know, my street is from Italy. Together. Also, I would like to put it in one word uh, about the tax. Our salary doesn't get any better. We get cut it off. The tenant's salary doesn't get any better. The tax will go out. So we're going to end up losing the home. I hope all of you can take this as a, you know, reconsider it. I thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody get up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All yours. Good evening. Mary Higgins, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to comment on a letter printed in the February 25th, 2016 edition of the Belleville Times, written by Belleville Deputy Mayor Steve Rubeck. 
Quote, Mr. Esposito decided to return full-time to the township's tax assessor position, requiring an immediate need for a township manager. Mr. Moro Tucci, who had served as our township manager before and has over 40 years' experience in local government, was good enough to take on the job of township manager on very short notice. So all of a sudden, Mr. Tucci rides into Belleville like a knight on shining armor from Nutley, where he serves as a commissioner to save us. Do you think the people in Belleville are stupid? No. This was a planned and swiftly executed handshake deal. Let's look at the quality of service over quantity of time. Quality over quantity. When Mr. Tucci was our township manager, there was a budget surplus in the millions. Did the taxpayers get a reduction? Anybody remember? No. Nope. Well, the answer is no. Not a single penny. Why wasn't there any mention of his track record in the letter as town manager? No comment? Thank you. I'll continue. The letter goes on to state what a bargain the taxpayers are getting with Mr. Tucci's contract. Mr. Tucci, I'm not blaming you for this. This is handed to you. Nothing personal, right? So no. Quote, however, Mr. Tucci does not receive health benefits, performance bonuses, or pension benefits, which save the township a considerable amount of money. Really? In the cherry picking of the contract details, Mr. Revelle deliberately omitted mentioning the 139,500 salary for an interim position, which is more than double the salary of our previous town manager, a 24-7 car, 28 vacation days, 15 sick days, and the worst one of all to me, no stated work hours, no mention of any monitoring of his performance, how does this save tax dollars, and who is monitoring Mr. Tucci's hours and work performance? Who's monitoring him? Anybody? No, thank you. This Mr. letter Sagan, is not written. Wait, I, I, I just would like to answer that question. Yeah. It's not that it's being monitored, but the town manager is on call 24 hours a day. There's no way that they could be monitored. Uh, he could be working excess hours all the weekend. He could be working a weekend. If we state the hours, do we want to pay him overtime for the time he works? No. I'll Can give, you give that's, me an example? That's the answer According I'm going to give you. I don't know what else going to give you. I understand answer. what you're saying there. According to the contract, though, he's absolved from even working one hour a week. It can work in the opposite way. It can work 52 hours in a week, 40 hours. It could, but not. One hour a It could, but in the, in the time that he's it's been arbitrary. here. It's arbitrary. In the time that he's been here, I see him every day. Well, I came here a couple of times to say hello to him and five times, and he wasn't here. Okay. And I left my name with the secretary. Okay. But the car was you parked want outside. You want one, please? All right, just minutes. came to say hello. All right, now. <laughs> Actually, I pulled in as you were pulling out. All right. That, you're speaking about the day that you were filming, yes. I pulled in, I was out to lunch. It was later in the day, and I pulled in as right, you were filming out. Okay. In my car. car you right. In your car. In my car, yes. You have no car yet? You don't use a town car. No, I don't use a town car. Did you get the new car that's promised in your contract yet? There is a car that's provided for me in my contract. No, I have not utilized a township car. I utilized it for one day and then I returned it back to the fleet where I felt it belonged and I've been using my 2008 Jeep every day since then without even reimbursement for gas which I'm not asking for. Well that's so very I don't, nice, I don't the contract use that. did not state right. the, police, and, the, the police car. It was another car. So it's nice that you let the police there is, there is no take that car back. Well, there's no car. There's there no, no car? There's a, two thousand, there's a 2008 Jeep. Yes, I am entitled to it. All right. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, please. I can understand if Mr. Rovell wrote this letter as a private citizen, but he didn't. It was an attempt to rationalize what could never be rationalized because there were errors of omission. In cherry-picking Mr. Tucci's contract, you would have us believe that you actually did us a great favor when all we were handed were the pits. Stop trying to give it a halo effect. Stop using your position of public office to build a power base with a favored few 
and ignoring those who are saddled with Mr. Tucci's salary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fucci, 61 Continental. Uh, I didn't hear everything more said earlier, but at last meeting, did we not hire grant writers? No. No, no, no. no we'll be going out on RFQ for a grant writer. That was something on the West. And we talked about it. We discussed it, but we never, it was never authorized, yes. That's all it was. Mrs. Frantantoni? Phyllis Frantantoni, Mount Prospect Avenue. I hear that you are thinking about a track up, up, up at the field. Yeah, well, well, I thank you if you do put it in because when they re renovated that field, I had asked them to please put a track up there because I used to go to Nutley over there and walk, and there was nothing in Belva. They told me it never could be done because there was not enough room between the field and the uh, The track we were going to put in was strength and thought that we were applying to Green Acres for what we go on, on what we consider the JV field, not on the not around the pulpit. All right, well, at least there'll be a track up there. Yes. There'll be something. That's what we're trying. That's right. And I'm investigating it, at, again, at the request of the mayor of the town council. Well, I hope so, because... Uh, and so do I. Belleville doesn't have much, many things like that. And talking about the firehouse with the firemen, why can't we use volunteers? A lot of towns use them, and years ago... People from Belleville, in fact, friends of mine's kids came to this town meeting, not this town meeting, but a town meeting, and offered to work the EMTs, work as EMTs at the firehouse. But Belleville said no, so now they work in Nutley. They went to Nutley where Nutley welcomes their volunteers to do the work, and Belleville does not welcome volunteers with things like that. We would save money. These people are well-trained. And I think it would be a good thing for Belleville and build up the morale of the people in Belleville. Greylock Parkway. Is the center median staying like that? Are you doing anything else with it? I think that was this. Yes. You want to check with me? Oh, Joe, 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 I, from Union Avenue down, it's finished, correct? Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to check with Tom Harris to see if the upper part is going to be repaired the same way. Okay. I was in Harrison or East Norwood. I forgot where I was the other night, which, which town. They had a center meeting exactly like Belleville has. They concreted it, and they put lights up in the center. It was a long pole and two, tra two lights hanging off the sides. It looked, it looked nice. In fact, it looked like it was a quaint little town. Why can't we do something like that? We just do it, and it looks like concrete. That's it. Do something to beautify it, to make it look nice. I mean, call public service. They might even offer to pay for it. Like you told me they couldn't pay for the light on Union Avenue, which a lot of people, the, uh, the county paid for. But call them and find out what could be done. Maybe we can do something to beautify it, because just to have the concrete there doesn't look really nice. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's a microphone deal with fire brigade. We, the council, have created a position, director of technology, who we gave to a guy who's got a very nice lucrative pension, and they, he got a rate of 65000 The last I checked, he's getting almost 70000 Why can't he take care of these microphones and teach him how to use it? He's getting paid good bucks. He's the director of technology. That should be part of his job. In regard to the fire trucks, I brought this to the mayor's attention. Tomorrow will be three weeks. At midnight, I'm just ready to go up to bed, and the entire fire department, three trucks, were in front of my house. It happened two doors over. Somebody left the stove on. It was a gas leak. But all three trucks were out that night. Three weeks ago tomorrow. Be there. That was that was that was brought to the construction board official. I remember in your office we brought yes. his attention, and he was going to check into it. I don't know. We got a report on that, but it was brought well, to the attention of the. Well, I spoke to Anthony. Right? Yes, not the three. But I just want to make a point, Mr. Law. All three Belleville right. trucks so, were there. Yeah, they don't always not have twelve guys there. It's just that when they don't, then they. Well, can't I have still haven't there. got my answer as to how many men are getting paid but not working because they're using up their. Uh, um, 
few sick leave or vacation time. So I'm still waiting for that answer. But don't take up my time. <laughs> now, in regard to what Mr. Tucci said about Mr. Harris does a complete job, I beg to differ with you. I don't know if you've been up to our municipal stadium. I brought something to you. On Knowlton Street. Okay. He planted trees in front of the stadium on Knowlton Street. You know where he planted them? 18 inches from the stadium wall. I took the picture, I brought it to a council. Now, now they've grown, and the branch is growing into the stadium and all that. So, and there's other things. In addition, he required a whole public hearing on the CDBG grant. The last several years, I come to those meetings. This year, I come with another citizen, and he's never here. The one time, he was down at Edison, and I had to sit here and wait for him to call me. And then my recommendation constantly every year is to clean and reline the water mains, which should be done before you praise him for doing the roads and the curbs and the sidewalks. He shouldn't be doing that. Mr. Tucci, I brought it on a contract. Mr. Antoni, I've, I've heard you at the last two meetings say that, and I agree with you, all right? And I'm praising him for the planning work that he's doing on the roads that I'm involved in right now, the nine roads that we're going to be doing, which includes milling, paving, curbing, sidewalks, and aprons. So in that regard, your recommendation was, in fact, a good one. I, I totally agree with you. I've... I've transmitted that over to him. He will be checking all the infrastructure before we do any more paving projects. Uh, I, I, okay? I can't speak to the trees you, that were planted in front of the stadium it. because I wasn't well, here. But I'm talking about you praising him, right. and I criticize him publicly on many occasions. Well, we well, all have opinions for the road work that he's going to be yeah, doing now. Have, under my watch, I'm going to make sure that they're not I'm not complete. talking about opinion. I'm talking facts which I can back up with pictures. Fine. All right. Now. I'm glad you could make it, Mr. Natari. Well, Mr. Grant right. Tony, yeah. I was sick. And um, you know I'm sure I, I wish that on anyone, and I'm sure you wouldn't either. I uh, take exception to that. Supposedly, you're supposed to be the author of the town manager uh, ad that's going out and all that. Uh, just briefly, one of the things, why would we put uh, a, a thing in there that requires 20 years' experience? Well, I mean, you could have a good town manager who worked five years, did an extraordinary thing for a township and all, has a wonderful record in another town, and maybe that. That in itself... Well, he doesn't have to be a manager 20 way. years. The what? He does not have to be a manager 20 years. 20 it years says government experience. Government experience. Why? years experience, years of government why? Why? Years experience why? as a manager. Why? There are people who can exhibit extraordinary accomplishments in a few short years. That in itself limits the field to quite a few people. And I don't want to take up my time going through it, but that should be good. And I know if it was just advertised in the League of Municipalities paper, it should be advertised in a lot more places and a lot wider circulation than that. Um, it, it's, it, it's crazy what we're doing. Uh, in regards to the cornices, uh, Mr. Tucci uh, is a good speaker. He talks real fast and he real fast and said, well, the cornices are a problem because of age. The outside of the building was done, renovated not too long ago. In fact, the parapet were all redone, and that side, the south side, up front, was rebuilt. You'll see the little slight different color. And red. So whatever is not due to age. You know, so whatever problem, I'm glad it's being taken care of. But I just want to correct you, and you know, some well, of the don't correct me because I'm again, I'm not a professional engineer, but I did in fact consult the professional engineer, all right, and the contractor who's making the repair, all right, who told me it's because of age and it's because of water and it's a terracotta mixture that they trowel on there, and that's why it was peeling. Because my question was, if that was concrete or some other concrete-like material, why is it peeling? I've never seen that happen. All right, and I was a public works director for 13 years, so it's not that I'm a novice coming to this. But then I learned that it's not concrete, it's terracotta, and because of age and because of water, that caused the peel. Well, we should So I can, I can only relate to you the, 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 the comments go, that I received from the professionals. We should go time. after the contract, then, because it was done in the Gorey administration, and this I'm not sure if you made from the town manager when it was done, the renovation. Uh, so, perhaps, but, but, I don't, but I don't believe so, but I'll be happy to check. All right. It was, well, I'm sure it was done in the Gory administration. And uh, now, with the state aid, at the last meeting I brought up, 
you know, I told you the tax bill plus the state aid were the equation. And then, Mr. Mayor, you, you, alluded to, you said something like, oh, what do I want to do? Eliminate, not take state aid? And you yes. said yes. I have been a proponent. I lobby our legislators to eliminate the state aid. I, I forgot a whole regiment. I did a, a chart from our tax bills and state aid from 1991 to 2000. In 1991, when Florio started the state aid business, right? What it was, it was another way to pick our pockets. But it was Belleville Municipal only got $1 billion in aid. Then it went to three, then it went to four, then it went up to eight and nine million dollars. In that same nine year period of time, our tax rate still went up exponentially. The Board of Bed was even worse. They went from $1 million in aid to $18 million in aid. We saw no tax relief. And as I testified at several assembly hearings, I showed them that chart, I showed them our tax bill. The only thing state aid did was allow local governments to create more positions and give outrageous salaries and hide it. So it didn't look. You know, you, you know Uncle Jimmy uh, paid the live with you for 10 years. He was rich, so he was giving you 10000 a month, and you were living high in the hog. Uncle Jimmy died, and then what happened? You got that lifestyle. That's what's happened in government with state aid. It was a fraud because the government were, you know, couldn't raise that. People were objecting to taxes. So our guy called him the Gang of 120 down in Trenton. They, with, in conjunction with local politicians, uh, we'll do state aid. State has no money. They had no money. I told you this, I just paid my income tax, my state contract life, my sales tax, my income tax, all the things they paid from us and then they give back to you guys to spend on the state level. So no such thing as state aid. It's taxpayers' pockets that pay every single penny of the thing. Now, today's What's March 8th. Yeah, I'm going to finish up. Today's March 8th. Mr. Tucci is a great town manager, so he's got important state law. He's got 10 days. March 18th is when the proposed budget is due. Let's see if finally one year we can come in with a proposed budget. I'm not asking for approved. State law says the state has its budget in. Other towns have their proposed budget. I have property in other towns. He's got 10 days. Let's see how good he is. You can get that proposed budget in your hands Thank you. by the 18th. Good evening. Michael Sheldon, 47th Fletch uh, Councilman Vitari asked me to say a few words about the online property tax or the payment system. But before I do that, uh, late this afternoon, I got an emergency announcement from the Bubble Police Department, uh, which was already posted to the township website, but it wasn't discussed earlier this evening, so I just would like to quickly read this. This, has, this is going to impact as well the Senior Center. This is, uh, involves the closure of Franklin Avenue, I'm mean, sorry, Mill Street between Franklin Avenue and Harrison Street. It says, please be advised that Mill Street will be closed for construction to all vehicular traffic from Franklin Avenue to Harrison Street, Harrison Street starting Wednesday, March 9th to Friday, March 11th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Drivers may also experience roadway detours and delays in or around the area of Mill Street near your home. And please be advised that residents and parents picking up children at Sandy Lane Nursery School can do so by approaching the marked police unit at Mill Street and Harrison Street and advising the officer that you're going to Sandy Lane or that you are a resident. Please be advised residents attempting to access the seniors building may do so by approaching the Mark Police Unit at Mill Street and Franklin Avenue and advising the officer that you need to get to the senior building. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. This is posted on the township website if anyone should need to consult it. Thank you. All right. uh, in regard to the online property, uh, pay, uh, property tax payment system, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Tucci for acting so swiftly in bringing this about. Through last year, there were a number of delays beyond my control, but uh, within a couple of weeks of the institution becoming top manager, he looked at the system, made sure it was ready to go, and gave me the authorization to enable it. So I thank you on behalf of the township for finally bringing this to fruition. Uh, as far as the payment tax uh, the payment system goes, uh, the, uh, the system, I want everyone to be aware of the fact that there are some fees involved in using it if you uh, elect to use a checking account, there's a dollar five transaction fee, which is, I guess, the you know, cost of a stamp or the gas that would be involved in coming to the town hall to pay your property tax bill in person. If you use a Visa checking card, there's a three dollar ninety five cent transaction fee. But there's one thing that everyone needs to be mindful of is the, the cost if you 
use any other credit card, the fee can be as much as 2.95%, not $2.95, 2.95% of your property tax bill. So if you have a $2,000 quarterly tax payment and you're hit with roughly 3% surcharge, transaction fee, that's another $60. But I've made special efforts with the recommendation of um, Mr. Tucci to let everyone know that that surcharge is, has nothing to do with the township. That money is not going to the township. That's an arrangement between a given resident and their financial services provider. So please, if you're going to use the online property tax payment system, use either a checking account or a Visa debit card. Stay away from using any other credit card. Uh, at this point, uh, we're kind of in the doldrums. We're on the off season for property tax payment. We're about five weeks in to this current quarter. But uh, I see from the traffic logs of the website, roughly 20 to 30 people per day are visiting the Edmond site, the portal through the township website. But I assume that once we get close to the end of April and another quarter is upon us, that the uptick in traffic will be very significant. But in anticipation of that, I'm in the process of moving the township website to a new hosting company. For the last year, it's been hosted with GoDaddy. Not the best company in the world. Great if you're a 17-year-old blogger, but not the best company if you're hosting a business or commercial or government website. Uh, we're going to be using Bluehost. And it turns out that Bluehost not only is more powerful, gives us more services, but is one-third the cost of GoDaddy. And I've been very cognizant throughout this process of trying to save every possible penny. Uh, had we opted at the get-go for a private hosting service, dedicated server, the fees could have been as much as $3,000 a year just for the hosting. To date, it's only cost the township uh, less than $300 for the hosting. So I'm doing everything I can to minimize the cost of, of, of the website. So that's all I have to say about it. Thank if you. anyone has any questions about the, the online system, feel free to contact me through the township website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope you can all hear me. And I'm sorry that I holler out, but that's why you have microphones, and I'm sure I'm not the only one sitting out here that can't hear at times at meetings. And it comes to the senior building. First of all, when I first went around there, it was a disgrace. Thanks to Mayor Kimball and Kevin Esposito, keeping after them, we got the place wiped down, painted, we got new chairs, we got new tables, made the place very presentable. That's why I don't want just anyone coming in there and think they can do whatever they want in that building and destroy what we fought for to have a decent looking place. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, um, this robocall, I wasn't home to receive it. Every time that we've had the street blocked off when the police car is there, it faces south. He's sitting in the car and he doesn't see anybody coming from this direction, this way. When you get up to him, he's not the least bit aware you want to go into that street to get to the senior building. So he's got to get out of the car and watch the people to make sure they can get in because I have a meeting on Friday. I'm tired of fighting the construction people over parking. I always have to tell them to move because they take all the places we're supposed to use. And so he needs to do that because I know I'm going to have to call our lady that does the calls to tell her to start making calls that they will be able to get into the club if they let the police officer know that is sitting there or standing in the street like he should be uh, so that we do have a meeting. They're going to think we don't have a meeting. Um, the um, uh, sewer pipes uh, by the, the senior building. Um, now that, well, all right, we got that, that they're going to be, uh, uh, the police will be there. Now, I did talk to, um, to Billy Gilbert because we've been invaded with mice. We've got police, uh, police, mouse droppings around there like you can't believe, all over the place. And so I did speak to Billy about that, and he did have the exterminator uh, come in um, to take care of that. Now. Against the back of the building, I, I don't know who looks this property over, but I do drive in and out of the lot. I look the place over all the time. I shouldn't worry about the building, but unfortunately I do. Uh, there's five porta potties sitting against the back of our building. They don't belong to us. We don't use them. We have bathrooms inside. 
even though some of the men in the club, another club, use our toilets when we're not there. Because when I was in one day, getting ready for a bus ride, I went and going to the ladies' room, and a man happened to be coming out of it. So, he doesn't belong in there. But anyway, porta potties belong behind their fence, on their side, not against our building. And tonight, 4 o'clock, when I went through there, before I had come over here, one of the doors of the porta potty was wide open. God knows who's going to go in there, what they're going to do, knock these things over from where they sit against this building. It, it, it's terrible. Oh, and I forgot one thing to tell uh, uh, Billy Gilbert when I was talking to him. All the drain pipes coming down on the parking lot side, they're all flattened out. No water can come down through these pipes. So please, let's get that taken care of. Um, all right, that's enough with the, with the club. But um, um, Mr. Tucci, there are a few things that I have to say privately, I really can't say publicly. When it comes to things there, it wouldn't be, you know, the proper thing to do. Um, something else was on my mind about that. Ooh, well, it might come to me anyway. Uh, Greylock Parkway, I like the new island that's been put in, the way it looks so far. But it's going to be nice when the rest of the street is done. It's like half the job was done and half was not done. And the fact that I live above Union Avenue, not that it makes a difference, but it is part of the project and a little bit over the, the side of the hill. So it, it doesn't look nice now when you drive down and you see this half done job, you know, in the middle of the street and the way it's been finished. Um, and also, um, Mr. Tucci, I wish the Board of Education moved as fast as you have in the short time you're here doing their investigation of what happened to our money over there at the Board of Education and who's responsible. So I think they should get moving faster than they expect you to move. Um, and not only that, now all I heard tonight was the debris on the bocce court. Is that all that matters up there? Did you look at the rest of this property? It's a dump. <laughs> Let's face it, mud, everything. Now, who's worried about it? They never use it. They never used it before it was moved. So what's the difference right now, whether or not there's debris on it? We got debris all over the place up there. Um, let's see. Oh, and when it comes to Social Security, what we were given the year before, the government took away from us. We're back where we were over a year ago. So we're no further ahead with our money. We need to draw the line in this town. Salaries are getting out of sight. I don't care about any union, what they say or what. Fight the darn union. Tell them you're killing the people. The middle class in this country has been killed because of this federal government, of what they have done to us. I pay a lot of money in supplemental insurance. So, I mean, why should a lot of us suffer for people that are trying to live high on a hog and don't want to hear what's happening. If they worked in the private sector, they would soon find out what it is to earn a living. Um, let me see. What else do I have? There was something else on the building, but I will take that up with, with Mr. Chuchi. Thank you. Criminal Collection 132 Franklin Street, Double. Mr. Chuchi, first of all, you have been openly attacked, in my opinion, this evening. You know, that's my personal opinion. You have been out of this job a very short time. I think it's fair that we all give you a sporting chance to, you know, make a real change as the town manager. Thank you. You know, if, you know, believe me, we'll come, we'll come get you. You know, if, know. you know, know you will. <laughs> if, you, if you flat out lie. And, you know, I've been, we've been coming to these meetings for the last, you know, year and a half, two years, whatever it's been, about the firehouse, okay? We live next door to it, okay? Now, I understand that, you know, it's, you know, it's an old building and, you know, it needs to be renovated and this and that. And we've heard 9,000 different reasons, point blank. We have heard that there is, now, again, in the paper, it says the bond is 247000 I originally heard it was 265, that it was 255. There was a rumor floating around that it was 400000 Okay? We need to know how much is actually bonded for the 
renovation and reopening of this firehouse. Because I do not want to hear, after all these estimates are done, and this and that, and the roof, and this and that is done, that this town is not reopening that firehouse. Because that would be a huge mistake. I've been yelling at this council for months about this. Okay, I think, in all fairness, that by the next meeting, that you should have all your happy little ducks in a row. I expect the fire chief to be here. I expect representatives of the fire department to be here. And I expect an answer. End of discussion. It has gone on too long. That's another thing with the the pressure in the um, fire hydrants, okay? We need to know it's not, I understand we get the water from Newark. Believe me, I know of what I speak. It is the town's responsibility to make sure the pressure is there and make sure that they're up to standard, okay? So please, like I said, I've been yelling at these poor council people for many year, many months now about this. And God bless everybody, they've all been trying to do everything right, but enough is enough. So please, by, the, by next meeting, I think we have you know, been patient enough to get definitive answers. Do you think that's fair enough? Sounds fair to me. I'm not sure that the fire chief, uh, with the permission of the mayor and council, I'm not sure the fire chief is the person to speak about the renovation, mm -hmm. uh, but if you'd like that. Who uh, would be, though? Uh, the engineer. engineer. Then get the yeah, engineer here. Get the engineer here, sure. Get the engineer. Sure, this way. Get whoever you need to get here to answer a question. A yes or a <coughs> no question. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, enough is enough with this. It's gone on too long. Because, like I said, I don't want you to burn through that 247000 400000 whatever it is, and then not reopen it. Because mm -hmm. that would be, that would end... That would put everybody in this town in danger. Let's get a correct figure on what bond we actually have we'll at the firehouse, yes. and then we're going to get a price on what it would cost to repair it, right. and then we'll make that determination. Yes. Okay. And also, one other last thing, it, you know, in the paper it says, if it's in next year's budget, hello, it's, it's in the budget. It's there. The money is there. Just please. We're going to see how much is there. Right. Yes. And, and we, I'd like to get a definitive answer, because like I said, I've heard it from a half a million to, you know, to a quarter of a million. We'll, we'll ask our purchasing agent what's yeah. actually in that bond, and we'll go. Absolutely. All right. Like I said, I'm holding you responsible. You do that. I'll get you your answer. Like I said, I hope I'm not disappointed. You will not be disappointed. All right. Mr. Uh, Frank Fleischman, I'm afraid you Franklin Street. Um, it's hard to top my wife after that, but I just need to ask a question. Okay. I understand that we're you all committed to renovating and rehabilitating that firehouse. Let me ask you this question. Are you intending to reopen it as a firehouse? Yes or no? I think I the truth of the answer, I, I probably would have to see what it's gonna cost. To determine that first and how much money is in the bond. Uh, don't, I think we have to get those answers before anybody makes a commitment to you. Well, Mr. Mayor, we all we all made a commitment already. That I know, we but it would cost five million dollars. Uh, then well, I then maybe that might change your mind. It's a small one thing they have. Come on, fine. Yes, Mr. So Crazy, then I threw a figure. I don't know what it's going to cost. Do you know what it's going to cost? I can give you a good estimate, and I guarantee it'll be accurate. After 44 years' experience, my estimates are on give me, par. Give me a figure, so then when the, the well, professionals I come in, I'll even know. I already opened the bond. I have. No, Kelly give me a professional opinion. How much Why don't you be renovated? Know? What? The bond origin for 270,000. I guarantee you, the renovation could be done for 270. Well, we'll see. And that that roof, okay, that's like a one-family house. It should cost more than 10,000. You're giving me a dollars figure. Let's see what our engineers and the architects say. Yeah, well, they got they got big pockets. Well, okay. Get a local roof. Okay, Mr. Flesh. That's the roof. That's my conversation with you, Mr. Flesh. Thank you. I mean, we all we all did make an agreement. 
Yeah, you I'm sorry, are you finished, Mr. Fleischman? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Make a motion close. Second. Clerk, roll roll. Councilmember Pacquiao? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Waldo? Yes. Antari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Lumber? Yes. Okay. Yes. Make a motion move the consent agenda. Second. Any deletions? No. 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 Uh, number one. And number 14. Just one in fourteen. One in fourteen. Yes. 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 So is there anything in particular? No. Just Member Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? No. Notori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Schumover? Yes. Mayor Kimmel? This is number 14. Move it. Second. Quick roll roll. You just wanted to roll. Just roll call. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? No. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Kimmel Yes. Mayor Kimmel. Yes. Any business? I want to take a resolution. I want to take a resolution. I want to take a resolution. You can't talk to him. Maybe it's not over. Yes, it's in a meeting. Yeah. I would like to move that we take a resolution off the table. Second. Resolution one. Our resolution on the table for the board. Yeah. Got it. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Kennedy. Yes. Wongo. Yes. Natari. Yes. Robel. Yes. Wilbur. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Full resolution. Second. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Kennedy? No. Wongo? Yes. Natari? Yes. Schumann Yes. Mayor Kimball? Well, I'm going to vote no because I think in uh, discussion we were going to dis take out. Uh, yes. discuss this with the Regan. Mm -hmm. This was part of it, wasn't it? I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, the discussion we're going to have is going to be on shared service. Shared yes. service. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, on be. shared service. Which they, is they, they, they would, they would no, no, no. that. This is just that thing. The manager said, let's take it off the table, and then we could always put it back. We could always go yeah. back to it at this year. So yeah. doesn't work if out. they don't follow through, then we can reinstate okay. it. Okay. Yeah. You missed Rose the Mayor Yes, sir. Yes? New business. Move resolution number one, but Murphy has a change in it. This is with regard to the fire engine. There should be seven. A. Huh? Pardon me. A. Go ahead. Yeah. A. Uh, a. Sorry, fire engine. Respectfully ask that uh, a member of the governing body add the following words to the end of the first act of the second recital, which, which says adversely impacted by the disposition of this vehicle, and then it has the word and right after that, is not needed for public use, which I have been assured it has not been needed for public use by the fire chief. Uh, make a motion, we amend it. Move it. Second. Second. Quick one. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Mayor Kimball? Yes. Move resolution B. I'll second it. Clerk will roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Longo? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Mayor Kimball? Yes. Move we'll resolution number C. I'll second it. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Waldo? Yes. Atari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Kimmelberg? Yes. Mayor Kimball? Yes. Move we'll resolution D. Second. Circle we'll roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Tomorrow, can we uh, have the approval of the town engineer? I'm voting yes, but before where he's actually paid. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Wongo? Yes. Notari? Yes. 
Robel? Yes. Yes. Mayor from Robel. Yes. Kevin, anything else on your business? Not me, not for you. Yeah, we did this uh, new business. First of all, some, uh, I don't know if it was at the last meeting, but we all agreed that we were going to renovate the Civil Lake Firehouse. And everyone said yes. Now all of a sudden we're wondering if we have enough money. First of all, it's a one-story building. A roof, what does a roof cost? Ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. The bathrooms, we can even renovate them with some of our men that did the senior bathrooms. So what do we need? Just a room upstairs for three firemen to be? We need this firehouse, and we had everyone's okay. Everyone voted yes. Nobody's saying it's not going to be renovated. We're just going to see what the price is. All right, now, race, uh, Mr. Mayor, say, say the price comes at, in at... Uh, do you do you think that we could come up and have Mr. Harris look at this and give us a price? These late bloomers that come all the time. I mean, I go around the world, but the whole thing is every single one of them. Yeah. No, my phone's not on. It was emergency. Well, it was emergency with um, wait, giving uh, reimburse I know whoever for EMS service. That's an emergency. All right, but it's very it is. They charged her. And she, they sent her a letter for the ambulance, and she didn't know what it was, so she paid the 400 or 500 or whatever it was. I do, I do understand that, but what I'm saying is, why, you know, why do we have to, we don't look at anything, you're voting on... I would think you come in after the closing of the, uh, of the of the borrow. Why? Closing of the business. Borrow? Yes, I'm sorry. Why are these on? How come these late Why are they, why are they on? Well, we had... The, we had the, uh, the terracotta falling off the building, mm -hmm. right? an and the contractor was here, so we didn't want to pay again no, for him to remobilize. No, the sanitary I, sewer on Jerome Street was an big collapsed, so okay. by the time we do specs, so okay. that was that one. And the this, third? The third, the $400 reimbursement, all right, was pretty much a hardship for okay, this because it was incorrectly built. Right. So that's why. And they were it wasn't published when the agenda went out, so that's why we did it on the new business. Okay. But whenever possible, we'll always put it on the agenda. It's in my face, and, and listen, that's why I wanted to you know. It's a legitimate question. That's Council fine. Wanted. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's all I have to say. Jones. Yeah. <clears throat> there, this might not be important, but there's an error on uh, the end of the paper here. It says the next meeting is the 23rd. I think it's supposed to be the 23rd. Okay, so just so for the sake of the future. 22nd. That's it. Only known in Chinese. Type of over correct. Yeah, it's a type of over. I know that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned. Motion See you on the 22nd. See you on the 22nd. It was a special meeting on the 16th. It was a special meeting on the 16th. For what? Call it. Longer sentence. Call it. 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 Call Oh, I'm sure.